On NPI brought to you by DigiKey this week, it is Microchip Lady Ada. What is exciting and new from new product introductions this week? I'm glad you asked. This week, uh, our pick of the beginning of the year is going to be the Picket from Microchip. They have a new Picket 5. So it's the fifth generation. This is your pick. Is that pick? And you know, I've had a pick kit, so this is like I'm, I'm familiar with this device. Um, you know, I bought one a very long time ago to program uh, PIC 16 F84 microcontrollers, and uh, they've improved it greatly since then. So this is the fifth generation um, available at DigiKey, and it's in stock. Um, so as you might expect, uh, you know, it, it works with MP Lab, MP Lab X, which is I guess the tenth version. The fifth generation adds more and more support for chips. Um, I don't know what generation they added support for ABRs, but one of the nice things is this is one of the few programmers that supports, um, you know, SWD, JTAG, PIC, AVRs, various styles and techniques, um, and uh, different, uh, you know, um, you know, MIPS chips, etc. cetera. Uh, it's a very wide range tool. So let's take a look. So inside, is a at sam e70 so it's like a 300 megahertz uh cortex m7 processor so it's a pretty beefy device it's got bluetooth built in uh, which i'll talk about in a little bit probably a roving networks module um and it can communicate it can it can power the target it can be powered by the target um it's got an sd card and uh various buffers and analog scalers and the thing that's cool about it is like i mentioned it isn't just like an old school um pick you know 16f or 24 or whatever you know, my controller it uh programmer uh, or ds pick it's also for the avr series the sam series and the cec series um so you know ever since microchip purchased um atmel like almost 10 years ago eight years ago um they've been slowly integrating avr and atmel chip support into everything and uh they have it here so on the board, there's an 8-pin connector, um, and you see on the left-hand side, like it says 8-pin SIL, that's like a single inline connection. And you kind of pick and choose which pins you're going to use for your debug interface. So you can see like if you're using UPDI, you're going to use, um, you know, reset, uh, VTarget, that's the power of the target, ground, and data. Whereas if you're using, um, you know, AVR JTAG, you're going to use almost all the pins because you have to have TDO, T-Clock, TDI, and TMS, um, but also supports TPI, ISP, PDI, UPDI, and debug wire, which not a lot of programmers support. If you have like an old style, um, you know, Arduino compatible with an at Mega, I think the 328 and the 324 had debug wire support, which I honestly never got using because I never had debug wire debugger. So this is a programmer and debugger. Um, I think this image was drawn in like the mid nineties and they've been <laughs> using it since I've seen this drawing multiple times. Um, so as expected, it supports all the pick chips. It can generate uh, high voltages. Some of them require like the M card pin to go up to 12 volts for high voltage programming. It can do it. And uh, it also, like I said, uh, supports debug wire, um, which is a one wire debugging system. Again, I, I have not used it, although I wanted to, I believe it's supported in the, um, at Mega 328s, whatever series. There's also TPI. TPI is used for small AT tiny chips. I've definitely used this. Uh, it only uses like two or three pins, um, data clock and reset. So like, you know, there's a six pin AT tiny tens or whatever. Um, there aren't enough pins for SPI. So you, you get away with the TPI interface. There's also um, high voltage AV, HV, SP and HV, PP. Obviously, you don't usually need this as much unless you like really messed up your microcontroller or you have something like you're using on UPDI programmable chips, which is like the latest AT tinies. Um, you can use the UPDI pin as a reset pin, but then you have to use high voltage programming mode in order to enable it. Um, you need 12 volts. So yeah, and in this case, uh, it'll generate that 12 volts for you, which is very nice because it's a total pain in the ass uh, to generate and, and create that pulse if you don't have a programmer that supports it. I would recommend, uh, I did not purchase the adapter, um, and I'm purchasing the adapter now because, uh, you know, if you want to connect all these wires up to your dev board, um, especially if you have JTAG or SWD, there's standard cables and connectors. And this is a little dongle that like plugs into the 
side of the um pick kit five and then gives you all like all the cables and adapters you can also just craft your own honestly but it's handy okay but then the best part about this the thing that i think is the thing that makes it the pick of the year because we just started so this is the, the best npi of the year is the programmer to go ability which i think is new and is uh really neat because a common thing that i've bumped into in my life is i need to I want to give somebody a programmer. I'm like, okay, program all these boards. And I don't want them to run MP Lab on their computer. Maybe like, you know, I don't want to install it or there's like driver issues. I just want to be like, look, plug this thing in. And in the field, you press the button and it programs in the, the flash and the fuses, whatever that you need. And once in a while you can get, like, I think uh, Seger has one for SWD, but it's like really, really expensive. So this is like a hundred bucks and it has this little micro SD slot on the back, you can see. Within MP Lab, you have to generate the program file. So you have to like in MP Lab, like create the thing that tells it the chip and the code and the fuses. Blah, blah. But once you have that program file, you put that on the SD card and then you slot it in. And then if it doesn't connect to USB, you just press the button. Um, and there's like an LED strip that tells you what's going on and it will just program it in the field without a computer as many times as you want, um, super fast and repeatedly. So. Um, there is an LED strip and there's like, there is a little bit of like feedback of like, oh, like blinking purple means it's programming. And, you know, it, it does work um, in the field without a display. However, I will say I would recommend um, they have an iOS and Android app that you can use and it will like give you more information. Like if it couldn't connect or there was a failure in verification and you can also select which file you want to upload to your device. So if you have like multiple programs and multiple different chips, you're like, oh, this is for the AVR, or this is for the UPDI, whatever. You select it and then you press program and go. So basically you have like, you know, you can't compile on the on through the app, but you can select which program file you want to upload uh, via Bluetooth. And this is iOS, but there's also Android as well. Available. In stock, you can actually buy it. I can't even imagine how much they had to delay this because the SAM E70 being Cortex M7, I'm sure was like very limited during the chip shortage. Um, but we're seeing all, all sorts of hardware reappear. So this just popped up in the DigiKey slash new. Yeah. And I, this is very cool. I'm pretty, I was pretty sore about microchip because it was really difficult um, dealing with them. The humans not who were just being a little shifty um during the part shortage so um well, but it's all months. but you know all's forgiven you know all's forgiven. it was a crazy night i know what do you do? like you know happy to have them on here it was tequila and, and there's not enough sand and uh, what are you gonna do you know it was desperate times and we all did something um we did get the chips eventually we did get the chips eventually it was just it was it was desperate it was it was it was, it was now that you can get chips it was grim it's a perfect time to pick so, like, uh, everything's pick fine it. now love me some microchip um Let's uh, play this the video. thing. This is cheaper than the AVR ICE or Atmel ICE. So it's like cheaper yeah. than most programmers. You get the Bluetooth on the go programming and it supports the entire family yeah. of chips. What I'm saying is um, it's all fine. And if you live through the chip shortage, we got hit so bad. And even us were like, you know what? It's totally fine, microchip. Sending you a Christmas card. You're back on the nice list. Okay. Um, it's true. Um, let's see a video about it. Let's see a video and then uh, that'll be on API. The PickKit 5 can also program targets without the need for a host computer using the tools Programmer to Go feature. This allows one of several pre programmed program images to be selected and read from a FAT32 formatted micro SDHC card inserted into the tool. The memory card can be programmed from the MPLabX IDE. In the Project Properties dialog, go to the PickKit 5 category, then the Programmer to Go option category to set up the programming details. Next, select the Programmer to Go menu item from the Make and Program button. Alternatively, use the IPE application. Enter Advanced Mode, then choose the required hex file. Select the Settings tab, adjust the programming settings as required, then click the Programmer to Go button to commence programming the card. When using Programmer to Go in the field, 
Power for the PicKit 5 can often be obtained from the target hardware, so typically only a connection from the tool to the target is required. Remote programming is initiated by pressing the button under the PicKit logo. Press and hold this same button to reset the PicKit 5 in case of error or after inserting a new memory card. Hi, I'm MPR.